good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you may be. You are watching Sketching Past Midnight Live. Let me cue the little graphic here so I can put it in the corner. I am, of course, uh, your host, the greatest of all time, the undisputed, the unchallenged, so it must be true. It might be true. And that is, of course, uh, this guy right here. <laughs> Uh, for anyone that may be uh, tuning in right now, I really appreciate your uh, your time <laughs> and your, your effort to uh, uh, be amused by my musings, uh, even if it's ever so slightly. Uh, my name is C.B. Smallwood, and I, I am a comic artist, or attempting to be a comic book artist, you know. Uh, it's kind of a work in progress. And um, for those uh, that are uh, watching live, please... Uh, Use that chat feature if you want to communicate. And for anyone watching the replay on YouTube, uh, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. And uh, I do read each and every one of these things, and I really do appreciate it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing here, uh, what I've been working on, and then we'll get straight into sketching. And before we do that, let's go ahead and get into the uh, question of the day. I actually had it already pulled up. Question of the day. If you could study under any professional, any professional, who would it be and why? Okay. Uh, I already have an answer in mind, uh, but, you know, I'll just kind of let that sink in. Question of the day, if you could study under any professional, who would it be and, and why? Now, for me personally, if I could study under any professional, it's going to be a comic book artist. Okay. It's going to be a comic book artist. So that, that's the professional that I would pick. And let me get this out of the way. Okay, now let's talk about what you're looking at. And uh, let's go from there. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> this is my uh, little superhero team. And they are Monster Patrol. And uh, I don't know if you know this or not. You know, I probably didn't render really well. But these are all females. Uh, this is like, you know, kind of like the uh, vampire lady of the team. Um Lady Techno, for lack of a better name, or a better word, whatever. Uh, the blue flame here on the side. And, um, yes, this is a girl. <laughs> but really, uh, you know, from a distance, if you look at a dog, right? If you look at a dog from the distance, can you really tell if it's a boy or a girl? I mean, is 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 your, um, you know, can can you tell? <laughs> so same thing here so this is a she beast okay um this guy here i'm still working on a name for him i haven't come up with a name yet for him it's still a work in progress and and uh so there's that now let me show you some more stuff that i have been working on so this is a monster patrol and uh, move this out of the way and i'm really enjoying um taking public domain superheroes, retooling them up, and making them mine. Okay, this one belongs to me. You can't take it. Okay? You can do your own version, but this one is mine. It's sort of like um, Frankenstein, for example, Frankenstein's monster, whatever, Frankenstein the book. It's public domain, so you could do your own version of Frankenstein. You could put him in uh, uh, high heels. You could give him like a, a mohawk multiple earrings, make him kind of look like a punk Frankenstein monster or whatever, and that would be your version, and no one else could do that version, and anything that you publish with that is yours, but you don't own the original Frankenstein because everybody owns it. Well, it's the same thing with this. So um, this is a... Let me back out here so you can see a little bit better. This is uh, Silver Streak, a public domain superhero from a defunct comic book company... I don't know what, what what they were called, but uh, this is one of uh, Leave Gleason's. I think that's his name, Leave Gleason's uh, characters. And uh, back in the 40s, maybe 50s, I'm not really for sure, pretty much everybody, pretty much everybody was doing their take of Superman. So, like, every superhero character during that time period... Uh, was a Superman-based character. They all had Superman's powers for the most part. And um, so I thought because this guy's called Silver Streak, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to focus more on the running side of things. Uh, I'm not going to depower him too much, though. I want him to be super strong. 
and a little bit somewhat in, invulnerable, but not too much. Just power him down here and there, but uh, the the he's going to be fast. But I don't want him as fast as the Flash. I don't want him to be a god. I want him to be a man. A man who can just happens to go really fast. And um, I know I didn't do too hard of a job here, but, you know, he's got braces on his legs and it goes all the way down to his feet and ankles and all this other stuff. He wears goggles, you know, because, you know, he goes pretty fast. Not as fast as the Flash, but very fast. And I really love how my art is uh, coming together. I feel like it is. I could be wrong. All my influences are, are, are getting a big homogeneous pile and, and they're they're making love and and, <laughs> and this is this is the love child of that. You know, a little bit of Arthur Adams, a little bit of Del Keon, a little bit of Mark Silvestri, Rob Liefeld, yada yada yada, you name it. Um but I don't know, maybe I'm thinking a little too much. And by the way, do you like this uh tablecloth here? Huh? And for for the uh, festive mood, <clears throat> we have of course the Incredible Hulk. Something that I just drew, just for the heck of it. You know, I, I love the Hulk. Hulk's just one of these characters that I really, really enjoy. And you know, I hadn't drawn him in like eons, and I thought it was time to revisit that. And you know, I, I didn't know if I really got a chance to really discuss it in um, the last video that I did, but. It's like, you know, nobody knows who Silver Streak is, and people definitely do not know who Monster Patrol is, which is, these are my creations. And, you know, people don't know who Wildcat is. That's another comic book character of mine. And, uh, and so it's really hard to g gain traction with your own comic creation. So the best way to do that is take stuff that people already knows and just try to knock it out of the park, you know, do, do, do the best rendition Redemption? Rede Dang it. English is my second language. <laughs> it's not coming out well. Uh, but anyway, do, the, do my best version of the character. Let's just say it that way, okay? Quit being fancy with the English language. All right, so pretty happy with how this, this one was turning out. And I got one other thing to show you, and then we'll get straight into drawing, okay? I promise. I always like to give these little updates of what I've been doing, what I've been working on, and and um, it's just, just how I roll, you know? Um, you know, I'm putting together a uh, super team of public domain heroes that I'm tweaking and making them my own. So these are my versions. Uh, and also, uh, you know, some characters that purely 100%, you know, that's me that I own and I'm putting them together in a super team. Uh, it'd be called something like either, uh, the legends core or, uh, uh, what was the other name? Um, the legends brigade, you know? <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. Lots of stuff there. All right, so let me show you uh, this character. It's based off the Black Terror. The Black Terror, another Superman uh, public domain typish character from back in the day. And so I'm taking, I'm tweaking him, I'm tweaking him, I'm tweaking him. I tweaked him so much that he's becoming something new. You know, uh, you can see, you know, the Play-Doh that I based it off of, but then I, I've taken, sculpted it in, into a whole new creature, you know. It's like, it's like uh, starting out with a snake and you end up with an alligator, you know, through the process of messing around with genetics. But instead of genetics, it's a pencil and paper. So, you know, I got this uh, character here. And uh, I, right now I'm calling him Blackheart, not Black Terror, Blackheart. Uh, just, you know, think it's interesting. He has a flying, a flying pirate ship. Surrounded by green mist. It's got some type of green bird. And uh, these skeletons, I, I know they're really crude right now. This this is a work in progress. So don't judge too hard. <laughs> but these skeletons will be green. With uh, pieces of coal for their hearts that burn bright. 
and they, they rise out of this green mist and stuff like that. And there's like a flaming sword. And there's just oh, so much cool stuff to go with this. I'm really excited about um, all these things that I'm working on. You know, I'll, I'll pile them up on here. You know, I'll overwhelm your senses. You know, uh, I'm really liking the the uh, Silver Streak. Because to, to me, um, you know, he's, he's going to be the everyman. He's gonna he's gonna struggle and he's dealing with um, failure. You know, he he actually quit being a superhero for a while uh, because he failed. Somebody died. It's terrible. It's bad. <laughs> and and um, he came up short. And and so that, that's the kind of story I want to tell. You know, and 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 I want to show that 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 he has a heart. You know, heart of gold. And and then you got these people uh, that that you know might be different on the surface, but they have to come together as a family to deal with this situation that they're thrust in, you know, uh, they, they're turned into these, uh, creatures or things or beings or whatever. And, and they get these powers. And, and so, you know, they have to choose what they're going to do with these powers, you know, cause there's a lot of things that are happening in this universe that I'm crafting, you know? And then, you know, we've got the black terror who has, a mysterious past, you know, you know, maybe he's not who he says he is. Is he the original black terror? No, maybe possibly, but he calls himself the uh, black heart. Now he has a flying pirate ship that I've not finished yet. You know, he's got a crew of green skeleton men that man this ship and he's got a flaming sword. He's got Jedi like powers. He's got Superman like powers. He's very godlike, very mysterious, uh, sorcerer type deal, you know, and he's he's out to get evil doers, and and it's I, I don't know, it's it's a it's a dark book, yeah, it's not a depressing book, but it's it, it, it's dark leaning. Let me put it that way. Uh, a lot, I'm gonna trying to figure out how I can mesh the 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 Lovecraftian stuff, H.P. Lovecraft stuff into this universe. And, you know, I've got ideas, and I think they're pretty good. I don't want to, you know, spill the beans too much. You know, I, I just need to, I just need to draw faster, you know. So, I was thinking about, it's time to start drawing. I was thinking about um, drawing on this uh, tonight, but um, I didn't get my uh, other phone out. Yes, I got multiple phones. You know, it was, it's it's a weird accident. I'm not rich. It's just one of these things. You know, it just happens. And <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the wife, you know, goes to order herself a phone, and then somehow she play. You know, like there's like a mix up on Amazon, and she hits the the, the order button like five or six times, and then uh, lo and behold, you get quite a few phones in the mail. So anyway. Um, one of those phones is not with me right now, so I don't have the reference to use to draw. Uh, yes, yes, folks, reference. It's a good thing uh, to draw this uh, ship back here because I don't know how to draw a pirate ship. I've never drawn a pirate ship before. Well, I have, but from my imagination, and those kind of turn out pretty wonky. I want this to look pimping, okay? And just because I'm pointing at the uh, lady statue at the, what is this, the mast? What, what, do you, what do you call that the front of the ship? Or whatever this is. <laughs> it's just pure coincidence I said the word pimping in the point of her. So, what we're going to do, we're going to work on the Hulk. I had, you know, I tend to draw a lot of stuff, and, and I do finish drawing, doing my pencils. Uh, but when it comes to inking, I just kind of hold off on inking a lot. You know, like I, I'll go I'll go headlong into inking, and then I'll just abruptly stop. And a lot of the reasons for that is, you know, it's like you're having to do the same work over again. You know, you've already done it once with a pencil and now you're having to go back and do it again with an ink pen or a brush or, or whatever the crap it is that, that you use, you know? And also I just, I get bored, you know, and, and, and it ain't just getting bored either. It's, it's also, if I can just dogpile on this, uh, there's a lot of stories that I want to tell and I just feel like there's just so finite amount of time that I have to tell these stories in and so I just try to hurry and get everything out there and, and that might not be the best way to look at things or think about stuff but you know that's just how it is I got my uh 
uh, black India ink here. Uh, this is actually speedballed ink that I poured in this vial. So every time this empties, I take this big, huge bottle of speedball and I pour it in there. Speedball ink is the same stuff that tattoo parlors uh, use, but also it happens to be uh, a nifty tool that um, comic artists will uh, use as well to ink their crap. I guess that's all I need right here. All right, let's get started. Um, <laughs> let me put this back up here. As a reminder, uh, question of the day, question of the day. If you could study under any professional, who would it be and why? Well, I have a couple of these. Get out of here. What is that stuff? Let me open my ink vial here, okay? Bear with me. I feel like it's just going to explode over the page. And if it does, so so let it be. It's just, just how it's got to be, you know? The ink just really dries in there, you know? It's just, yeah. There we go. All right. Oh, uh, you know, when I do my live shows, I, I rarely like to ink what time I am doing them. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, it just depends. You know, there's cer certain things that that I don't mind inking when, when I'm doing live, but there's other things that I'm not too sure about because, like, I really, really have to focus in, in uh, talking and drawing and thinking about and, and trying to entertain folks at the same time. I'm just, I'm not that good at it. I love this brush. I've said this many times before for those of you that are already uh, familiar with me. You know, uh, speaking of uh, Twitch, Twitchy, Twitch. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I, I'm very new to that, uh, to the whole platform. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how can I uh, get views, get people to watch my stuff. And all this other other crap, you know, because I, I know how the YouTube thing works, but I'm not really familiar with the world of Twitch. I'm looking at different platforms to uh, to stream to. There's like a Periscope, which is like a, apparently it's like a. Um, let me zoom in here where you can actually see what I'm doing. There is a Periscope, which is like a Twitter thing. Um. Then there's like uh, D Live and um, Bit Shoot. I laugh at Bit Shoot because you know Bit Shoot actually has potential, but it's like I feel like the people that put that together just kind of gave up. <laughs> they just like it's like nope, we we've created the monster. We 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 no longer care. You know they just that was it. You know they and the reason I say that is if you ever been to Bit Shoot. Uh, there's interesting things there, but there's um, a lot of conspiracy theory stuff on there, and I say that uh, respectfully, you know, because I don't, I don't like the idea of of using the word conspiracy theory because it's very dismissive to different trains of thought, you know, because uh, you know at one point, you know, uh, saying the Earth was uh, round was considered a conspiracy theory back in the day, you know. Uh, by religious figures. How dare you say the world is round? And how dare you say that that the sun doesn't revolve around the earth? Did I get that mixed up? It's the earth that revolves around the sun. Da, 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 da. Anyway. Oh man, this ink is really pouring out. I'm, I'm losing control of the situation. Um point is like with with bit shoot it's just it's just so wild and unruly you know that their search engine function is just a mess you try to search for stuff and it's just like it, instead it gives you for lack of a better word you know a lot of conspiracy theory videos i'm not saying that there's no validity to those conspiracies nor am i saying that those conspiracies are at validity to them but that's a lot of what you get on bit shoot 
they 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 just they don't there's no rhyme or reason to the stuff that's on their front page. It's just it's just a big mess, you know. So anyway, um, you know, BitChute had the potential to be a uh, something of a competitor to YouTube, but uh, I really do feel like you know just something happened where they just like you know they just gave up, and threw their hands up in the air. Uh, there's a, uh, God, there's, there's a, another site called Spitfire, which is like a mix between Facebook and YouTube. And then there's another site called Odyssey. And then there's a couple of startups like Lunar or Lunar TV. And then, uh, uh, Brian, I think Brian's another one. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of, uh, competition, uh, emerging in the world of, um, video streaming social media stuff, you know, lots of YouTube competitors. And this is great. This is a good thing. You know, I like that. Uh, but the thing is, you know, there's not many, uh, viable choices right now, but that, that will, that will change. It, 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 I think it all just really depends on, uh, making sure that the marketplace stays you know free that it, that it stays a place that 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 allows for competition you know because right now there's like a real huge mon monopoly in in the digital realm in in the in the uh internet world you know where these tech companies are buying all these smaller companies and they just keep getting larger and larger to the point where like uh they're actually having influence on politics and everything it's just, it's insane so um you know i hope that uh the internet stays free like the wild west and uh and that we actually get to the point to where uh we, we get like several great things of competition because i think competition is a great thing because when you have competition you know the customer always wins and also, ultimately, uh, the competitors create better products, you know. And that's the way it should be. But that's not the way people want it in the world, those, those that run the world, you know. They shun the idea of competition. They want the monopoly. And then when people have a monopoly, they will charge you what they want. And they'll ask for the moon and beyond. Kind of reminds me of internet service providers uh, that, uh, you know, when you have only one or two in the area, you know, they, they just, they play games with you, you know. They, they always start out with this 12-month deal where, where you know, depending where you live at, you know, it could be like $40 or $80 a month just for internet. We'll say $40 just for sake of argument. And then... Uh, after the 12 months is up, it go it, it, it doubles, it triples, it triples the price of your internet, you know. And that's just, you know, the way things are, you know, because there's a lack of competition in the world. It's very disappointing, really. I'm drawing the Hulk's feet and... I didn't uh, use any reference for drawing the Hulk's feet. And, uh, you know, this is one of many things that I really need to sit down and work on, uh, working on my anatomy and, uh, and feet. I want to work on drawing feet. I, I want to study um, the feet of Sam Keith. I love the way he draws feet. You know, it's, it's very childlike, you know, um, very whimsical. You know, he, he, he uh, borrows a lot from Arthur sodium sodium whatever that guy's name is and um where who, who arthur got it from you know uh maybe hell i don't know maybe frank frisetta frisetta well, i don't know frisetta is that how you pronounce his name the guy that draws all the awesome women and medieval and fantasy dragon stuff love frank frank's great <clears throat> So, um, sketching away here, the show's going pretty good, 
but pretty silent. I, I expected that, you know, when I when I went live, I didn't really uh, let nobody know that I was going live. First of all, I just really wanted to test out, uh, you know, uh, streaming on Twitch to see how it would go. You know, I had no clue if, you know, 10, 20, 30 people would show up and be like, what the hell is this? You know, this ain't Legend of Zelda. <laughs> you know, this ain't Halo. This, 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 this ain't Doom. Who is who is this guy? This is this is a gaming platform. Why are you making comics on here? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I just have I just have problems on YouTube. You know, it's like you know if you. If you don't have a uh, thousand subscribers, you, you're you're nobody, and you you kind of lose a lot of your uh, your perks, you know. And you know, I believe in trying things new, you know, uh, going out there and seeing what's out there, you know, because you never know, you know, you got to uh, change stuff up, you know, every once in a while. You know, Twitch may work out pretty good, and then again, you know, may, maybe everybody. In the Twitch community, be like, you know what? Uh, no, your 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 whole show is 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 dumb, sir. <laughs> I hope not, but you never know. There's a you know some of my artist friends uh, and uh, buddies, cohorts, uh, co cohort co cohorts co cohorts. How do you pronounce that? Help me out. Well. Some of my peers, let me put it that way. People like Marshall Lee, you know, he's uploading to uh, TikTok. I, I, I like to think that he's one of the first that did that, you know. And now I'm seeing other people uploading uh, their um, comics and art on TikTok as well. There's just so many options right now. And I think the cool thing is, or or not the cool thing, but, but the smart thing to do is to have multiple accounts maybe and try to stream to all of them simultaneously, you know, that's something I'm contemplating. That's something else, you know, but I feel like you'd have to build an audience on, on each and every one of those, you know, to have a maximum impact, but I could be wrong. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a social media guru, so don't take my advice on it because you know, if if I knew what I was doing, I'd already have a thousand subscribers on on YouTube. I'd have like a zillion subscribers on on Twitch and yada yada yada. I'd have like ten fans on Mines. <laughs> you know, Mines, Geo. That's that's something. That's another one there. Like, you know, Minds is a, mind, a lonely place. It's like you basically just talk to yourself when you post on there. You know, they're supposed to have like several hundred thousand or a million uh, active users, you know. And uh, I really hope that that platform grows. I think it has a lot of promise, you know. The people that, that work on it seem to um, invest a lot of time and stuff in it. I just feel like uh, it's it's not quite there yet. I'm not saying that. You shouldn't try it. You shouldn't upload to it or whatever, but it's just a, you know, it's a work in progress. Minds, minds.com. Sort of like a Facebooky thing. I like it, you know, but it's just, it's just really lonely. So it kind of defeats the purpose of social media. I think most people just kind of use it as a uh, alternative, a just in case, you know, type of scenario. <clears throat> let's see here. I think what I want to do here is, you know, when it comes to rendering and stuff like that, I've really got into uh, something that uh, Bob Layton does and Dale Keon used to do. Uh, John Byrne and Neil Adams, this uh, feathering technique where it starts out solid and it goes into, um, you know, this broken, divided thing, you know, I really like that. I, it's, it's a cool look, you know, so I've really implemented that in my art and surprised I ne never done it sooner. You know, I think, you know, I was really caught up in, in, um, 
more of the um, 90s um, cross hatching, you know, type of thing, you know, which I'm still using, you know, I'm still using it, but I, I'm wanting to go back to that uh, 70s, 80s um, type of feathering and, and cross hatching. Um, the one, one of the things that I want to work, work toward is having a openness to my art, you know, where your eyes actually fill in the details, if that makes sense. It's sort of like when you look at um, Hulk's face here, and this ain't the best example, but there's a little hints of it. Like, for example, uh, right here, um, you, you see darkness, light, darkness, and there's this hump here, and that hump is created by the dark shadowing on both sides, you know. And so there's like multiple, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. There's there's multiple examples of that on on Hulk's face where um, the the feathering, some of the cross hatching is creating this effect. And I want to have more of this open, clear spaces on the faces and the bodies that I draw to where your mind will actually interpret the lines that I want you to see. I know it's kind of hard to describe, but hopefully I'm getting my point across. <clears throat> so uh here in a second we'll get to the uh question of the day if you bear with me uh i'm just kind of messing around i'm having uh, a little too much fun here but i guess in a way i'm not taking it too serious i'm just kind of doing my own thing you know um you know i don't work for marvel <laughs> so I don't have to worry about messing anything up. And also, uh, this is something that, that I'm doing to try to garner some more fans, more interest or whatever in what I'm doing. Some, some more people to the CB Smallwood family, you know, and, um, and also to, to, to get good, trying to get good. The more you draw, the more you, you, you do the chosen thing that, that you enjoy, the better you're going to get at it. And, you know, sometimes if you can't think what to draw, you just, you just draw, uh, you go back to drawing something that you're very, very familiar with. And one of the best things I'm familiar with is, is the Hulk. I've drawn him many, many, many times, you know, even though you can't really tell, you know, I got a lot of work ahead, you know, to get better at drawing the Hulk. One of the things that I'm doing, and I'll zoom out here, see if I can zoom out. Uh, w one of the things that I'm doing is trying to merge a little bit of that Keonism with Sal Buscema. I'm a really big Sal Buscema fan. Well, really huge Del Keon fan, actually. But Sal Buscema, John Buscema. I love Sal Buscema's uh, run on The Incredible Hulk. It's fantastic. And I, I want... I want to incorporate that in my art. I love the the way he do do his faces and, and the storytelling, and also the, the 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 way he did the anatomy and the poses, and it, everything was very dynamic, and I love that. And so I try to incorporate that in my art, you know. And uh, you know, hopefully that turns out good, and uh, we'll see. Oh man, about ready to sneeze. It's coming. Give me one second. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be completely honest here. But I had a nose hair. And it is like bothered me. And I pulled it. And then I had to sneeze. It had to come out. It was killing me. <sighs> Seemed like the older you get, the more you get like little interesting things that happen to your body. It's not very flattering. <laughs> so uh between um sugar problems and, and and having to drink water oh my gosh which i drink still drink sweet tea oh thank god for wonderful sweet tea but um ah, stuck drinking this accursed stuff <laughs> Uh, well, you know, you do, you kind of, you do develop a taste for it over time, you know? 
feel like I'm going to sneeze again. All right, so we need to get back to inking here. And just a reminder, uh, the question of the day, which was, if you could study under any professional, who would it be and why? Okay, that's the question of the day. And I'm going to go ahead and take this time to answer that question. Okay, uh, so for me, as uh, someone who is trying to be a comic book artist, I think that, uh, let me dip my ink here. Get me some ink. I don't know, it's a tough question. It's obviously going to be a comic book artist. I had put some thought into this and I actually discussed it with uh, my good buddy, uh, Will Avenger, beforehand. <clears throat> um, there are several people that, that I would like to learn under. And uh, one of those people would be Neil Adams. And the reason I say Neil Adams is he's, he's a very well-rounded uh, comic book artist. And he has so many things that he does that I feel like I could benefit from. Like he has uh, like really good uh, poses. His anatomy looks good. Uh, he has really good storytelling. Um, overall, I like the way he does his faces and all these different things. And he has just such a breadth of knowledge of the um, comic book industry, you know. And so uh, I think Neil Adams would be one of my top choices, I think. I feel like I can learn a lot from him. Now, the funny thing about it is, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's kind of a running gag uh, for comic book artists not to, at comic book conventions, to ask uh, Neil Adams' opinion, you know, like... Uh, to ask Neil Adams to review your portfolio because he has this canned response. Uh, and nine times out of 10, when he reviews people's portfolios, he always tells them the exact same thing word for word to use reference. Now, to be fair, that's actually great advice, <laughs> you know, because I guess typically most people that do, um, you know, try to draw comics or whatever, you know, they don't use reference as often as they should. For some reason, reference is like, is almost a dirty word, you know, like, I guess some people see references as, as like, almost like it's cheating, but like, hell, you know, if, have you ever drawn a horse before? You ever, you ever drawn a horse? What about submarine? Have you ever, ever drawn a submarine? Um... I don't know. Have you ever drawn like uh, uh, the White House? You ever drawn that? Well, the thing is, if you've never drawn it before, how can you expect to have you know draw it and, and have people tell what it is that you've drawn? You know, I mean, like you know, if you try to draw it from from your head purely, then then you're you're, you're truly getting to the arm of uh, <laughs> the realm of art because it's just going to be pure inter inter interpretation. Inter interpret no it's gonna just be hmm in the eye of the beholder there we go that's a nice cop out for not being able to pronounce words in english and so yeah 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 so you 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 got to study reference you got to look at photos you got to look at you know pretty pictures uh, to be able to know how to draw stuff if you've never drawn it before, you know? And uh, for some reason, Hulk is missing a wrist here. A wrist. So, whatever, you know? <laughs> if you can do it better, I'd like to see you try. The gauntlet has been thrown down. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I would like to stay under Neil Adams and... Um, I think he has a lot more to say and a lot more to offer than his just canned response of, you know, um, use reference. But that is such a, you know, it's, it's great advice, you know, it, it's, it's often neglected, you know, I, I think there's a natural arrogance in artists, you know, to, to, to assume that we, for whatever reason that we can just draw whatever we want. And like, 
And then when we do, it, it never turns out well because, you know, a lot of us don't use reference like how we should. And it shows. And so that's what, that's I guess that's part of what separates the big boys from the little boys. Or the big girls from little girls. <laughs> it's the use of reference, you know. Go look at some pictures and study how things are done or drawn and all this other stuff, you know. I'm really butchering the inks on this, but that's okay. That is one ugly Hulk hand. And I didn't use reference. But to be fair, even though I'm being really hypocritical in this whole big speech I'm giving, um, you know, I'm just trying to draw um, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to, just trying to have fun here. Doing, doing a Hulk piece. <clears throat> you can always draw it again, I guess. I don't know. I, re I, I really don't. I don't mind one bit to draw it again and do it better. It, it, if I think something holds a lot of huge promise and I haven't really nailed the look of it or whatever, then I don't care one bit to draw it again. the heck kind of I'm just kind of going for it. oh you can't even see what I'm doing my apologies I had shifted gear and started drawing the the other hand so uh, Neil Adams is one guy I would love to learn from uh, another guy is Mark Silvestri and Mark Silvestri already has a lot of experience not saying that Neil Adams doesn't uh, with teaching people you know he taught uh, or uh tutored, whatever, mentored David Finch, uh, Michael Turner. I think uh, Philip Tan was another one. And, uh, you know, just, just a whole host of, you know, different people, you know, that, that he helped, you know, uh, bring up. And, you know, it's, it's, like a, it's like a who's who of the comic book industry, really. And, um, yeah, I think that I think that would be great. And, and Mark Silvestri is one of my favorite artists. Um, Jim Lee would be another one. You know, Jim Lee. You know, under under his tutelage, we had uh, Scott Clark, Travis Cherist. Uh, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing names right. Uh, J. Scott Campbell. You know, bunch of people. Brett Booth. A lot of great artists, you know, that just, you know, turned out a lot of great, great work. Let's see, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and just wing it. Drawing these little Hulk muscle things, <laughs> whatever they, they may be. All right. Now I'm just getting really sloppy and wild with it, and I probably shouldn't do that, but I am. You know, Todd McFarlane would be another guy that I, I would love to study under, you know. Of course, we know him from uh, taking Greg Capullo to the next level, which Greg Capullo was already awesome. Then there's um, Angel Medina. Is that how you pronounce his name? Angel Medina. Uh, I think, you know, Angel Medina didn't really change up much artistically, I think, when, when he started working for uh, Todd McFarlane. But I, but I think he got bigger and bolder with his art, maybe. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it. But I feel like that's, you know, something that he did. You know, that was a benefit of working under uh, Todd, <clears throat> the Todd father. Okay. Boop, boop, do, do, do. Let's see what we got here. All right. So, eh, 
you know, it doesn't look hor too horrible here. Um, <laughs> I guess I can use this uh, handy dandy um, white acrylic paint. It's a Snow White, and I actually use it to fix mistakes and do, do effects. Um, yeah, yeah, I might do that. You know what? And just for the hell of it, to take it a step further, to, to do something very blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you like them apples? I just bought these today. And let me tell you something. You know, I like to use uh, alcohol-based markers. I got this uh, one set that I'm still using, and it's a couple of them dried out on me. It's a uh, A E N Art. Um, I also use Ohuhu markers. This one's got a, a unicorn on it. I did not select this pack because I had a unicorn on it, but you know what? After a while, you kind of you kind of like it. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. <laughs> I don't, eh, whatever. But, uh, uh, you know, I got to thinking, you know, like most of the coloring that I do that I take really seriously is the coloring that I do on a computer. And I thought to myself, you know, hell, it, it does, does it really matter? You know, like I, I was playing around with a cheap marker set the other day and I was able to achieve the same result as, as an expensive set of markers. And I was like, you know, this is stupid, you know, just, <laughs> just buy you a little cheap set of markers and, and see if, um, you know, what you can uh, produce, what you can do, you know? And I think wizard magazine, if, if those of you that, you know, can remember that uh, they actually had a, a fan art section where, where, where fans would, you know, uh, share their art and, and you would, um, you would see <clears throat> a lot of this fantastic coloring, you know, that was sometimes even better than the pros with all the, the, the proper, you know, brushes and equipment and inks and stuff that they would use. So, you know, I'm going, you know, maybe, maybe what I'll do is I will color this with, with, uh, some markers when I get done, you know, why not? I don't care. This is just something just for fun, just for me. And the only way you can get good at, go, at art is to practice, you know, making art. You know, there's no substitute, you know, there's, there's no quick fix that's yeah, just that's just the way it is you know if you want to get good at something you got to go you got to do it and try to do it every day as often as you can oh man you know i could zoom in where you can actually see what i'm doing so here in a little bit i guess i'll wrap up this this broadcast i've had fun i've really missed you all I appreciate everyone that's tuned in live to watch this. And I appreciate everyone that's tuning in to watch it on the replay. I just want to remind everybody that uh, if, you, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please uh, follow, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Hit those buttons. Hit all those buttons. I don't know what the hell buttons that they have here on Twitch, but hit them all. Every one of them. <laughs> Simultaneously. You know, take it to the next level. And, uh, and for, for my fam over on YouTube, uh, please, uh, hit subscribe. And, and also if you're on, if you're on uh, Twitch or whatever, and you, and you see this and you like this, please subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers. I don't know if I'll get there, but you know, eventually I will. But with your help, I'll, I'll, I'll get over that little, well, what is it? It's not threshold. I'll, I'll get over that little hump eventually. Maybe. Do, 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 do. Man, I got all kinds of little wires and gizmos that I draw out here, and I'm mucking them up with this brush. It's not the right tool for the job, but I'm doing it anyway. So let's uh, zoom out. All right, it's time to say our goodbyes. I thank you all for tuning in and everything for those that will be watching the replay. 
Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I do read each and every single one of those, and I appreciate them deeply. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up with those as well. And let me thank, uh, you know, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Please be the boat, or, or be, the, be, be, the, be, the, be the ocean, be the tide that rises all boats, be the change that you want to see. You know, if you want the world to be a better place, you got to be a better person first. And then everything else will follow. You know, it starts with you. You know, and for those of you that want to be comic book artists, you know, I'm not there yet, but uh, please remember to draw faster. And as always, a carpe diem sees the day. And this is CB Smallwood. Uh, you know, just reminding you all, I love you. Please subscribe. Until next time.